Hey, Sarah. Hey, how's it going? Good. So you challenged me to brew a beer, a sour beer without using anything to sour it. That became the Goza. And it turned out wonderful. Yeah, I was really pleased with that one. But I think it's only yeah, fair yeah. that I get to challenge you back. Mm-hmm. Totally. Agreed. So, I've been thinking a little bit about this because I want to give you a challenge. And um, you know, think about how beer is brewed. Water, barley, hops. Uh, what if you didn't get to buy any yeast to put in your beer? I like this challenge. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a while. And I think the way that I'm going to do it, though I would love to do a Cooper's Australian sparkling ale, it's nearly impossible to find Cooper's in the States. I've tried. So I think what I'm going to do is take one of my favorite beers, Le Fin du Monde, which is a Belgian triple and is bottle conditioned, so it's got a layer of yeast at the bottom, and actually make my Belgian triple with their yeast. Okay, if you're doing that, and Belgian beers are my absolute favorite style, you have to promise to send me some, and then we'll we'll taste them together. Absolutely, I'll send you more than one. I promise. <laughs> Sounds good. So the first thing I actually have to do to make this beer is. Harvest the yeast. So here's the video of that. And it took me two tries because of course I screwed up the first one. I hope you enjoy the video. Hello and welcome back. I'm doing something I think you guys will be interested in today. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a long time and I planned on doing it with a different beer to be honest, but I couldn't find it. So here I am. So what we're doing today is harvesting yeast from commercial beer, which is kind of awesome because you can basically replicate whatever beer you like as long as it's not pasteurized. Um, so I originally wanted to do this because I wanted to use the um, Cooper's Australian Sparkling Ale yeast for my Australian Sparkling Ale, but turns out it's next to impossible to find it in California. <laughs> um, Thank you everyone for suggesting that I do that, but I don't live anywhere near Australia. So yeah, I even ordered one. And then the liquor store was like, we don't have that, sorry. And I was like, ugh. So I love Le Fin du Monde uh, by Unibrew. And so I figured I would try to make my Belgian triple with Le Fin du Monde yeast. Uh, so Le Fin du Monde is just like a uh, Belgian triple actually. So I'll just essentially be recreating Le Fin du Monde with my own twist, I guess. Um, so how you do this is really simple. It's basically just growing yeast. So if you've ever made a starter, you already have all the skills you need to make this. For those of you who don't know how to make a starter, I am going to verbally give you the quick run rundown of how to do it. So some things you need are a container. A flask is nice. Um, it makes you feel like a scientist. I like it. A stir plate, also nice, not necessary. Um, what you actually do need is water and DME. Um, that's dried malt extract. This is basically the sugar form of what you make when you're doing a mash. Um, also not super needed, uh, probably more for this than like a regular starter is yeast nutrient. And that's pretty much it. Um, I did, I have a hot tip for you guys. Um, I ordered some of this foam axe stuff. It's from Cellar Science. And um, I, or, I ordered this because I was gonna make a big batch pressurized like in the brew built. I ended up not using it for that. Um, but it reduces foam and if you've ever made a starter in a flask, you know that you have to wash it like a hawk um, This I used it for the first time in this starter and like I had both of these in this one when I was boiling it uh, No foam. It was kind of insane. I was like, uh, I, you know, I had the fleeting like Oh shit. Is it just gonna explode for some reason? I don't know. 
my brain works in weird ways. Anyway, so you add a in metric. We're going to use metric for this just because it makes it way simpler. A 10 to 1 ratio. So 10 parts water, one part DME. So if you're making a two liter starter, you'll use 200 grams. I don't know. Yeah, 200 grams. So if you're making a two liter starter, you'll use 200 grams of DME in it. Um, and I don't suggest going that high, especially if you have a flask that's this high. So I recommend only making half as much as your flask is. Um, there's a little stir plate thing in here, magnet, and that spins it around and introduces oxygen. So when you make a starter, you want to have oxygen for the yeast to consume because oxygen helps the yeast build their cell walls. And if you don't have any oxygen in your starter, you're not gonna get viable yeast. So if you don't have a stir plate, um, do this when you walk by it. Just, just this whenever you see it. And it's fine, I did that for years. I just got a stir plate like a month ago. But you can get stir plates for like 20 bucks. Um, I'll link below to the one I have. It's like really cheap. And you know, it's just a spinning magnet, who cares? Um, okay, so let's get to it. <sighs> I literally, all I'm gonna do in this video is like pour these into the air and turn on the stir plate. So you guys just get to hear me ramble. Um, so why I have these split up is, um, so there's not very much yeast in these. This one has more beer in it still because I poured this one. My husband poured this one, so he didn't leave me very much. Um, so I'm going to pour the contents of these into my flask. This is about a 500 milliliter starter, and I'm going to let that run all night. And then in the morning when it's hopefully showing some signs of viability, I'll start adding more starter. You don't want to overwhelm the yeast with too much volume. Um, that can stress them out. So start low and then just add. Um, I'm going to probably going to make, I'm probably going to make 10 gallons of Belgian triple. I love it. It's my favorite style. I, I probably say a lot of things are my favorite style, but like Belgians are pretty high up. Um, yeah. So let's, I get, let's do it. I just have paper towel over this because I wanted it to get super oxygenated. Um, what am I doing? I'm just pouring this in. Um, so obviously swirl the bottom. Um, the best beers to choose for this kind of experiment are ones that you can actually see yeast on the bottom. Um, your cloudier beers. I mean, not, not a hazy. Hazy is not what I mean, but like your Belgians that have um, yeast in them, they have yeasty flavor. Uh, those typically will work. Um, apparently Cooper's Australian Sparkling Ale is a great contender if you're in Australia and can find it, which some of us do not have the uh, ability. So yeah, I can see that there's some yeast in there. It's definitely not crystal clear. And I'm gonna throw this napkin back on. I want a lot of oxygen in there. I usually do aluminum foil, but I'm afraid it will um, like block the air going in. Um, and I am going to turn on my stir plate. The trick with stir plates is start slow, I've discovered. Also, trick to stir plates, plug them in. That usually helps. Because if you don't start them slow, they get all wonky and like kind of start flipping themselves. What you want is that little tornado in there is great all right well um yeah i will see you guys when i brew this um i actually have another tutorial of something else i'm going to do that's fun for this beer and that is make belgian candy syrup at home because i refuse to go to the homebrew store it is too far away so check back for that soon and i'll see y'all next time so i have an update uh this is what happens when you do this don't put paper towels over. You're basically making a wild yeast starter. This smells disgusting. It smelled good for a second, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll just make a sour Belgian. Whatever. No, it's not good anymore. So I'm making a new one. Um, I'm using these 12 ounce bottles this time just because they're cheaper per ounce than the big bottles for some reason. 
Um, and I'm just adding the yeast as I drink. As you can see, there's saran wrap so that wild yeast doesn't get in. Um, this is started last night and it doesn't look like there's much activity, but you can see that there's some yeast in there. So I'm hoping for the best. It is making a little bubble. So that kind of means that it's going. All right, well, you know, thwarted. It's just gonna take an extra week. Oh well. All right, if you guys saw from my last video, we have our Belgian candy sugar, skulls and all. And look, I successfully made a Le Fin du Monde starter. This is all our yeast down here. Um, I think I'm just gonna dump this whole thing in the beer. Uh, I'm making a 10 gallon batch with this. This is a gallon jar, so it'll be 64 ounces of yeast starter. It legitimately smells like Le Fin du Monde. It smells amazing. Um, so some things I learned. By completely screwing up my first attempt at this, I learned, obviously, you should probably put an airlock or saran wrap over it so you don't get wild yeast in your starters. Um, yeah, I don't know why that didn't occur to me. You know, it was like one of those brain fart moments. Anyway, this worked great. Um, I basically just put this on immediately. I actually started it in one of these Erlenmeyer flasks and then transferred it to this. And about four days in, when I started to see some activity, I uh, went from about a thousand milliliters to however many milliliters half a gallon is. After I did a, the second edition of Starter, which is just the DME mixed with water and some yeast nutrient, it really made all of these little yeast babies. Um, yeah, this thing doesn't work great on a stir plate. Uh, it, you kind of have to fuss with it, but I'm just amazed it worked, honestly. I was like, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna totally ruin this video, whatever. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the actual brew day. This has had a lot of lead up, so yeah. Um, also, I'm not just making my Belgian triple with this yeast. I'm making five gallons with a Belgian Ardennes yeast and five gallons with the Abbey yeast by uh, Le Lamont. So we're gonna have a triple, like 8%, I think it's eight or 9% beer taste test at some point. So stay tuned. See you guys next time, like and subscribe, all the stuff.